Like. Yeah, cool, man. So, uh, yeah, last week we went to went through Sydney for the week. We tried to make it, uh, you know, we want to be based on the ground there as much as we can. Um, went and caught up with a landscaper and a couple of the Sydney chippy chicks. Um, was really good to talk to them, um, see how they've sort of started their businesses, how they've been doing things. But, um, yeah, it was good. And then overall we, you know, sent quite a lot of jobs out. But the, the reason why we want to be doing the podcast and catching up with people is obviously more awareness and the people that we are talking and interviewing, um, it's really good because obviously we can promote our services to them as well. So Joe gave us a job, is that right? Yeah, Joe, yeah. Joe gave us an extension job in, in, yep. in the Northern Beaches up around uh, Manly. So. And that was their personal job? Hey? That was a personal one, yeah. yeah, yeah, correct. But they have an in-house QS, so I think they were using an in-house QS to do all their jobs for clients. But they were saying that the breakdown, our breakdown was quite a bit different yeah. to theirs. You know, yeah, a lot more detailed, is... a lot more split out, yeah. um, which, which she liked. She sort of said, you know, that was, you know, that was next level for, for their personal, you know, mm. for their personal project to be a good yeah. one. So obviously you deal with the majority of uh, the clients and the builders and that. What is the kind of feedback that we get for how we do our breakouts and stuff? Definitely high detail, you know, yep. like it's it's that split out, you know, the labor material sub trade. Um, it's, it's just, you know, line by line detail. Yep. But, that can be used practically, I think, you know. Yeah, nice. And the, I mean, you obviously see the sheets of what the QS is send back to it, like when we first onboard a QS. Yeah. Give us your thoughts. It looks quite messy, yeah. Um, no, just, um, <laughs> so like, when, no, no, when we send our example report to oh, the QSs, yeah, yeah, yeah. because in my, in my experience, the people that we've onboarded, uh, I'll get an example of their report and it's like, you know, 15 rows what across and I'm using. like, we need yeah. to dumb it down, builder friendly, like remove all the, the university bullshit and like we're pricing for the builder. So well, yeah, I, yeah. I, th I think my view on it is like some of those reports are designed to give a quote to a customer. They're not designed for a builder to be able to actually go through and use, yeah. if that makes sense. Like if everything's all lumped together, you know, and they've got a total figure, that's cool. You know, they know what that figure is, but they yeah. don't necessarily know what that's made up of. So yeah. from a practical standpoint, yeah. you know, I think ours gives yeah. Build that next level of detail. Yeah, for sure. I've, the thing that I've noticed is uh, when we break it out into our format, it's very easy to check what zone is what. For example, if you're doing a full renovation and you're say you're extending 20 squares, you're redoing the kitchen, redoing a bathroom. Um, I've seen other university QSs lump all the labour together, exactly. and then it's very hard to break out because if the owner doesn't have 250,000, they've only got 150. Yeah. How do they? How can you separate what each project costs? So. Yeah. I think our difference is always we've got like, you know, zone the jobs. So zone one is a total 85K, zone yeah. two is the bathroom 55K and the extension. So And the beauty of that is you can then condense that later on if you want to simplify it for the client. Yeah, you know, for sure. It, it can be condensed, but at least you know with that split out, yeah. you know, what you're working with, where yeah. exactly those costs lie. Yeah. So. Have, uh, have you had any clients ask um, sort of like us to do dress up reports or are they just wanting the standard Excel? What do they want? No, some, some, some of the clients will want a customer ready, you know, mm. something with, you know, I guess a PDF, pre you know, presentable format, um, yeah. logos, that sort of stuff. We've been doing a few of those, um, you know, put their logos on it, put the details of, the, of their client, um, yeah. obviously prepared for rapid QS, but it's obviously got the builder's details, so it's yeah, nice. something that they can then pass on. Nice yeah. and professional, not just a spreadsheet. You know? Nice. Yeah. Um, what would you say, how good was our volume of this month, say, compared to the last six months, and where were like the majority of these leads coming from? Talk yeah. about repeat business, etc. Yeah, so February was, was over double double our, yep. our biggest month prior, which is which is crazy. You know, How many so, jobs did we get out? Uh, we would have done somewhere in the vicinity of 45, I think, yeah, um, nice. in, in February. Uh, so yeah, good volume there. Obviously people getting stuck into you know new projects at the start of the year. Uh, a, a lot of that's coming through the, through the Instagram, through TikTok, socials, you know, people just yep. seeing what we're doing, you know, liking the look Man. of it and, and reaching out and sort of saying, hey, yep. could, could you help us? Um, obviously we've got a, a bit coming through paid advertising. Yep. Um, through socials as well so good mix right. of those in terms of where they're coming from it, it's sort of probably 60 percent new south wales and then within that it's probably 30 yeah. percent sydney and then a little bit wider around the you know the wider new south wales and the rural areas as well nice um are you getting any feedback or questions back from builders saying you know oh you guys actually respond to us or your pricing is pretty good or your details better than i just want to know how we size up against the competition not that i'm worried at all because yeah. i know our product's better but yeah. do you get feedback from the builders yeah i mean like the, the our clients are sort of saying look I've ne we've never seen this sort of detail in, in a qs report you know um so i think the detail is the big one the turnaround yeah. times for even just when people reach out you know there's nothing worse you know, you, you send a message to a company and you hear back four or five days later, or you don't hear back at all, you know, we're back, you know, within sort of yep. 20 minutes most of the time, yeah. you know, even on the weekends, you know, if we're around, we'll, we'll, we'll get in mm. touch, you know, just to let you know that we're on it. So. Yeah, sweet. Now, not everything runs smoothly all the time, but do you want to talk about that client that we had last week in regards to 
his expectations, when he got in touch with us, when the job actually went ahead, when he paid his deposit, and then once the job was on, yeah, two fuck ups. Yeah, I think you know um, that particular case. There'd been a conversation last month uh, around that job. Um, there were some delays or whatever, so that didn't end up going ahead. Then, then we connected this month about doing it this week. Uh, so I, the initial inquiry to going ahead was a month. Four yeah, weeks. A, a month, and there, you know there were some details to be confirmed. You know around yeah. you know some plans, structural stuff, whatever. And then obviously over that, you know January's a quite a month compared to February, right? Mm. So for us. You know, there's probably some stuff there around turnaround times being a bit different between January and Feb. Um, and then also probably about the client understanding what we need to actually get going. So mm. you can confirm the job, you can pay the deposit, but actually there's a bit of chat that needs to go on around, you know, some of the scope stuff, what's included, what's not included, you yeah. know, rates, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I think it's just about aligning up front what we need and how we work and then... Yeah you know yeah um, understanding what the lead-in yeah. times are that's are you still getting a lot of set of plans that are very messy 15 fucking pdf attachments and it's <laughs> yeah, a bit of a yeah, dog to go through <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah honestly bro when i look at it when i open it up and see 15 individual pdfs for us yeah. architectures it's yeah it's a pain it, in the it, ass it's, it's definitely pretty pretty challenging but um nah it's it, there's a it's a variety man like obviously we sometimes we'll get you know full tender docs other times we'll be working on concept architecturals we're going to assume Sweet. structurals you know we're going to assume finishing specs so it's a variety we can we can basically work off anything as you know from the back of a napkin Me. really th through to full, full yeah. stamp tender docs so yeah i think the beauty was we always try and have uh ex builders or ex building business owners uh doing our QSing so we can make a lot of assumptions even if we it. don't have uh engineering drawings drawings we can assume X size of structural steel or X slab in the our uh, guys X know. steel in the slab. Our so. guys know what, what what goes into those projects. Yeah. You know they they have that experience from doing it yeah. themselves. You know. Yeah. Um, Out of all the jobs we did last month, did you have any come through that were conceptual plans, but we could still do or assume a full takeoff? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, yeah, cool. we had a couple of new Is it builds. common? I, I would say it's certainly common in the early stages, obviously, of the project when you know our clients, the builders, are just doing a, a, essentially a, a budget feasibility test for their clients. You know, so Man. they'll have the concepts done, you know, and they want to know they want to know where the cost sits, what the total cost is. So yeah, cool. We'll, we'll build that out, you know, from Man. from those. That, that's a bit of chat back and forth with the client around what they think is going to be in it as well. You know, in terms mm. of things like finishings and materials and all that. So there is a bit of back and forth there, but yeah, we do, we do it quite a bit. Yeah, sweet. I know another uh, question we get asked quite a bit is how do you keep up to date with rates? You know, oh, are, are you guys familiar with the Melbourne rates, Sydney rates? How do we split who yeah. we've got doing what? Where? Yeah, I mean that. I mean that just comes down to the local knowledge, right? So obviously we've got, um, you know, we've got a couple of guys in, in Brisbane. We got we got a couple of guys in Sydney um, and, and and a couple of Melbourne as well. So we've got that local knowledge. I think once once we go outside of the main centres. Uh, there's always cost research done, you know, so like I know that our guys when they when they go to price a job in a rural centre somewhere They're going out and doing spending a couple of hours actually ringing around checking what prices are doing the cost research travel times You yeah. know accommodation all of that sort of stuff because you got to factor that when you it's not just the same as in the city So that's been a big a big bonus for us being able to actually go outside of the main centres do that cost research give accurate costings um, in rural areas, you know. Yeah, sweet man. Um, what do you think the projections are for the next couple of months? What's kind of the targets? How many jobs do we want to be hitting a month, roughly? Yeah, I think uh, the next couple of months we we want to be hitting at least fifty to seventy five jobs yeah. a month. I think really, which is which is realistic. You know, we, we're getting good good feedback through the socials. Nice. You know, yeah. a lot a lot of engagement. You know, a lot of direct messaging. Um, yeah. You know, guys are reaching out to out to us and say, hey, we might have lost this job. You know, we've already done the price, but you know. Mm. Would you mind just running your eyes over it? And we've done that for for, nice. for a few builders actually. You know, just yep. sanity checking. Yeah. Um, Do you know roughly what the smallest revenue project we priced in the last two months and the biggest revenue? Yeah, I mean, the small we did. We would have done a carport, just a an open structure carport. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think that that was, you know. 20, 25k. Yeah, or something like that, I know, think like, I did that retaining wall. And yeah, yeah, we've done a few. 40k yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we've done a, we've done a few retaining walls, those sorts of things. So, nice. you know, bathrooms, all of that, that, that stuff's nice because we can, we can pump it out, you yep. know, within a day. Nice. Um, so, and then through to the biggest, or, oh, you know, we've done a couple of fairly sizable architectural new builds, knockdown architectural nice. new builds, which would be sitting up three, three and a half million somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Um, so, you know, right the spectrum. It, the, that sort of high revenue based new builds not necessarily the most complex sort of a project though you know if, when you look at some of the the big renos that we've been doing you know the value of them might only be one one and a half million but they're pretty fiddly pretty you know the intricacies that go into those yeah. in some respects you know are actually more challenging than a three and a half million dollar yeah. new build Nah, sweet man and uh last question um for a small busy builder what's the perks of using rapid qs man 
focus on what you you know what you should be doing which is you know on the tools or, or running your business yeah. um you know you, you don't want to come home at the end of the day and have to jump into a spreadsheet you know we can we can do it for less cost than what your you know what your hourly rate is yeah, going to be sure. so so it's actually cost effective for you to be doing other stuff um yep. uh you know it protects you protects your your client um Me. you know, saves the admin so get it done by by the experts and Sweet. save yourself the time and coin. Cool, so if you're a busy builder, reach out to us at Rapid QS, we have the quickest reply times. If you send a proposal or plans in the morning, we aim to get it back sort of within two to three working hours. So uh, yeah, reach out, look forward to doing some work with you. Absolutely. Done Cheers, deal. Guys.